Welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, what is the link between water and aging gracefully? We know the human body is made up of about 60% water, and we also know that drinking enough water is so important for our day-to-day -day tasks. For example, athletic performance. I do a lot of jiu-jitsu, and I can tell you it is so important to be hydrated. Otherwise, one, you're cramping, and two, you can't perform at your level that you want to. Other stuff is energy levels. Even things in regards to kidneys going on as far as preventing kidney stones, one of the biggest ways to do that is by drinking more water. And of course, constipation, if you have it, you want to make sure you increase the water you're drinking. Now, all of that being said, what about chronic diseases and aging? Well, in 2019, there was a very interesting study by Allen et al., where they actually looked at the long-term effects of chronically decreased hydration in mice. Essentially, what the researchers did was they exposed mice to basically mild, lifelong water restriction starting at one month of age. And what they saw was that although in the first year, there really weren't any difference in growth rate, that dramatically changed following the first year. In fact, there was a slowdown in weight gain followed by a rapid drop in weight during the last weeks of life in mice that were chronically water deprived. In fact, when they looked at lifespans of mice that were chronically water deprived versus controls, chronically water deprived mice actually lived six months less or 18% less compared to controls going on. So that was a very interesting study because that's one of the first studies to really talk about how water may potentially be linked to life longevity going on. But that's an animal study. What about in humans? So there's a new study that was published this year in which the researchers looked at data from the ARIX trial. And ARIX is atherosclerosis risk in community study. This is a long-term prospective, which means it's looking into the future, study with 15,792 adults. At the start of the study, they were ages between 45 to 64, and this study has a 25-year follow-up going on. So in this particular case, what the researchers did was, in order to assess for hydration status, they actually looked at people's blood sodium levels. Now remember, normal serum sodium or normal blood sodium has a reference range of about 135 to 146 millimoles per liter going on. So in this particular study, the researchers, they measured the serum sodium of all the participants at several intervals. And in addition to that, they tracked about 15 different health markers to look for biological aging going on. And some of these markers were blood pressure, immune markers, and blood sugar levels, just to name a few going on. Now, what the researchers found was that the participants who had their serum sodium levels above 142, remember, normal is 135 to 146, so above 142 is still normal. Even though it was still in the normal range, above 142, those participants were about 15% more likely to present as biologically older than their actual age going on. And in participants whose serum sodium levels were greater than 144, they were about 50% more likely to be biologically older than their actual age going on. So in other words, the more your sodium was elevated, the more your markers that reflected aging tended to also be elevated. But that's not the most concerning part of the study. Then the researchers looked at the risk for chronic diseases and what they found was that serum sodium levels above 142, they correlated with about a 64% higher risk of chronic diseases like heart failure, stroke, atrial fibrillation, peripheral artery disease, chronic lung disease, diabetes, dementia, and even chronic kidney disease. Now, when we think about the potential mechanism for how sodium may be affecting all of this, you want to think about a couple of things. For example, what we know from animal studies is elevated levels of serum sodium are directly linked to elevated levels of inflammatory markers like CRP and blood clotting or coagulation markers like von Willebrand factor, fibrinogen factor 8 going on. So even though this study is only a correlation, not a causation study, because of the fact that in some estimates about half the people out there really don't drink enough water going on. I think the take home here is, is that 
this is another yet incredibly important reason for all of us to drink a little bit more water. And that drinking water can help not only with your performance, your mental status, risk of kidney stones, etc. going on today, but it can also help you to have a better, safer, longer, healthier, happier future tomorrow. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if there's a question or topic you want to have in a future video, just drop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to address it next time. Thank you.